Hello everybody, I am Daniel and this is me doing a comic run tier list for Ghost Rider. I figured since there were no tier lists online for this, I would have to make one myself. Plus, the way I decided to do it, I'm going to have to make it my own. I, uh, first of all, I want to point out that not only am I doing the major runs of Ghost Rider, I'm doing some guest appearances, we can look down here. I'm doing some guest appearances, like in X. This, there's specific ones. There's there's a reason why. I it felt like Alejandra, since she only got eleven. I think it was eleven comics. No, I think it was only nine, nine issues in her run. I kind of felt bad, um, especially because that run's probably going to be pretty low on the tier. So I figured I'd throw in a couple extras. Uh, this, the Circle of Four, and this for her because uh, I kind of felt bad because. When the major, the main writer for her series wasn't writing her, when someone else was writing her, um, she was a lot more interesting and cool. <laughs> that sounds awful, but it's true. Anyways, uh, and I'm, I threw on a couple, like, Blaze. I threw on the, uh, Challenge of the Ghost Riders for, I just, some of the stuff I threw on here for me, just because I wanted to. And some of them I put on here for other reasons. I also split the 90s series up into four sections. Issue 1 through 24, issue 25 through 50, basically the entire Midnight Suns crossover crap. And then I threw in the end of Howard Mackey's run as 51 through seven, uh, 69, and then 70 to the end for the end of Ghost Rider, the volume 2. This isn't everything. There's a four-issue miniseries from the 90s on Blaze. I didn't throw that in here because I barely remember it. I didn't put Trail of Tears on here, which I do think was pretty cool, but uh, I don't know. I just didn't put it on here. There's probably some other stuff I didn't throw on here. But this is, like, the most important main stuff from Ghost Rider. And I hope you guys enjoy. Let's start with um, Circle of Four. Circle of Four was a crossover to basically paying homage to the new Fantastic Four. Instead, we got Thunderbolt Ross, we got Flash Thompson, we got Thunderbolt Ross as the Red Hulk, Flash Thompson as uh, Agent Venom when he's bonded with the Venom symbiote. Um, we also got uh, Lara on um, X-23, uh, her, she's basically being Wolverine, and Alejandra as Ghost Rider. Blaze also is, uh, Jenny Blaze is also in here because at the time he's tagging along with Alejandra. So you do get to see him in it. It's a pretty fun, uh, crossover. You get a really cool scene where the Venom symbiotes combined with the Red Hulk and he's got the Ghost Rider powers. It gets pretty insane. If I'm correct, Tony Moore illustrates the entire thing. Maybe he does. I don't remember. I, I just remember he's one of the artists on it and I love Tony Moore's artwork. He's, he's amazing. Uh, where to put it? Where to put it? Where to put it? Where to put it? <sighs> I enjoy it, but as much a, as as much as I like it, it's not my favorite thing ever. When I think of Ghost Rider, as much as I mean, like some of the stuff I really enjoy, but I'm thinking as a Ghost Rider story, what are the my favorite Ghost Rider stories? What are the ones I come back to the most? What are the ones that really are memorable for Ghost Rider? This is just a fun crossover thing. I think I'm going to put it in B. That's where I just... I kind of just feel it's a very B story for me. Thunderbolts is the same way. Um, Thunderbolts... This is um, when Johnny Blaze joined the Thunderbolts team. If it's if I'm correct, it's Deadpool, Elektra, Punisher, the leader. Well, it's this red version of the leader. I don't think it's the regular leader. I think it's a different one. And Thunderbolt Ross. And uh, I basically just put his time on the team from issue 20 to issue 32 from 2014. And it was it was exciting because this was going on at the same time as um, Robbie's first run in Ghost Rider. So it was really cool as I got, at that time, um, there was kind of this area after after Alejandra's run ended. One second, let's do this. Yeah, after Alejandra's run ended, there was like a year where there wasn't any Ghost Rider at all. And then out of nowhere, Robbie Reyes shows up, and then Johnny Blaze. So I got to read two different Ghost Riders and two different titles, and it was really, really exciting at that time. That was a good year to be a Ghost Rider fan, I, th I feel like. Because um, you got a new Ghost Rider that was really cool, and you also got Johnny Blaze. 
um, on a team, and it was really interesting because me personally, I didn't read Champions, and so it was it was fun for me to see Jenny Blaze on a team that wasn't the Midnight Suns in the '90s. You know, it was Jenny Blaze as Ghost Rider teaming up with people. It was a it was a fun run. It's not my favorite thing of all time, but it, but it was a fun run. Uh, I also think I. I'm going to put it in B again. I think there's probably going to be a lot of stuff in B, but also I just think that uh, anything that I really enjoyed, but it didn't blow me the fuck away, I'm going to probably end up putting in B. There's that. Next, we got Fantastic Four. Um, The new Fantastic Four. And when I put the new Fantastic Four here, I'm not just talking about the first three, three-parter. I'm talking about pretty much every Fantastic, new Fantastic Four story in one thing. I, I just really like the new Fantastic Four content. It's it's exci- it's exciting. It's fun. It's my favorite Ghost Rider, Dan Ketch, to me up with the Hulk, Spider Man, and Wolverine. And I'm a huge Spider Man fan. I love Wolverine. He's not my favorite X Men character, but he's. I mean, I think Wolverine's one of those characters that's really hard not to like. So we're gonna go with ah. Uh, Okay, after everything that I just said about Thunderbolts and Circle of Four, I feel I'm going to be a little biased here just because Dan Ketch is on the team, and uh, uh, I'm going to put it in A. I really, really like New Fantastic Four. I think they're freaking awesome. And the fact that you can even play as them in uh, Marvel Ultimate Alliance, you know, the one that has the uh, specifically the uh, uh, with the DLC characters, you can have the Hulk, so you can actually create the entire team. And... Uh, just i love that team they're they're awesome they're one of my favorite things ever (laughs) i'm not going to do heavens on fire yet and i'm not going to do spirits of vengeance yet we'll jump down to ghost racers okay so ghost Racers ghost racers was after after the first uh after the first robbie reyes series i did which i think it was only about 12 issues long after it ended they did a mini series during this whole secret wars crossover thing called Ghost Racers. Well, there there was a bunch of other titles going on at the time. A a bunch of Battle World stuff and Secret Wars crap that was happening all over. But this was just a four-issue miniseries, Ghost Racers. And at the time, it had pretty much every main Ghost Rider. It had Dan Ketch. It had Johnny Blaze. It had Robbie Reyes. It had um, Carter Slade, even. And Carter Slade, I mean, they all looked different and weird. Carter Slade was kind of a centaur type thing. It was really crazy. And they also had Alejandra. So, I mean, like, every Ghost Rider was in here. And it was surprising to see Alejandra because it kind of felt like after after her series failed, they just kind of forgot about her. Like, hey, instead we got Robbie. He's a lot cooler. I, I, I actually like Alejandra. She's, I, I like her. I don't like her comic book run, but I like her character. <laughs> we'll, we'll get more into that later. But anyways, Ghost Racers was a lot of fun crazy wacky and exciting robbie was the main character of that one so it was kind of more centered around him i do love robbie but it was kind of a one and done thing i read it i enjoyed it and then i kind of moved on so i'm gonna put it in b with the rest of these guys it wasn't something i I think about a lot uh it was fun though it was extremely fun I will give it that. All right, let's go to Challenge of the Ghost Riders. This was going on, basically, if we thought the uh, the year of the Ghost Rider was exciting when Robbie first became Ghost Rider and we had Thunderbolts, you know, when this year of the Ghost Rider, 2019, was a lot crazier. We had, um, Jason Aaron was writing Avengers, so, and he's one of my favorite Ghost Rider writers. <laughs> writers, Ghost Rider writers. And he wrote, he was writing Avengers, and he did a cross, uh, he did a little arc, the challenge of the Ghost Riders, that had Johnny Blaze uh, having this race against uh, Robbie. But not only that, there was a lot of other Ghost Riders made cameos and stuff, and it was it was a lot of fun. But at the same time as that was going on, there was also the uh, symbiotes, um, symbiote of vengeance thing that was happening. Dan Ketch was coming back, and and this run of Ghost Rider. So it was it was an exciting time to be a Ghost Rider fan. And Challenge of the Ghost Riders was a part of that. And I did enjoy it. It was it was pretty cool seeing Jason Aaron write Johnny Blaze again. And also seeing him write Ra- Robbie, because he had never written Robbie before. Well, I mean, I guess he was writing... Never mind. He was writing the Avengers stuff. I just wasn't reading it. I'm not an Avengers fan. I've never really been a big Avengers fan. I, I'm much... 
if we're talking Marvel comic book team, the first team that comes to mind is the X-Men. I grew up 90s. X-Men was my shit. But I do like the uh, MCU movies. Anyways, uh, that was a chan- tangent. Yeah, so this 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 is another B thing for me. I enjoyed it. It was really cool. But this was also when Johnny Blaze was kind of being a dick because he was king of hell at the time. And he was just kind of a dick. <laughs> so um, as much as I enjoyed it, I don't like seeing Johnny Blaze be this villainish evil douchebag. I don't mind when Zarathos is, but Zarathos and Johnny Blaze aren't the same person, but it kind of felt more like Johnny Blaze being a dick. I don't know. I, I, I know he's technically possessed by Zarathos, but it doesn't... After Volume 2, they really kind of got away from the separate personalities where the uh, the demon and the character were different people. It kind of feels that way. It kind of feels like... So when you're reading anything after Volume 2, it kind of feels like they're the same person. The, the demon Ghost Rider and the person it's possessing. I don't know. That's just my take on it. Okay. I am going to... I'm going to do this when I do this. So let's let's skip to uh, the newest run on Ghost Rider right now. Uh, volume 10. It just ended. We're now on... Uh, what, what is it called? What is that? There's a new Ghost Rider tile right now. Fate of Vengeance or something like that. Uh, I don't remember. Anyways, it's it's... We're on a miniseries that takes place right after this. It's written by the same guy. So we're looking at the 2022. I think I probably screwed up on that date. Is it 20? I would have just put the number 2022. I think it's 2022 to 2024 is what it's supposed to say. Because I think it ended this year, didn't it? Or did it end 2023? 2024. I feel really bad right now that that is uh, like that. And I can't edit it because these are pictures that I edited on here. They're like actual PNG pictures that I I edited them in a different Photoshop thing and put them on here. So that's 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 fucked up. That's wrong. That's a typo. That's supposed to be 2022, 2024. I'm a little embarrassed right now, but you know what? I'm uh, I'm just gonna move on. So, anyways, this newest series, 2022, 2024. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it quite a lot. But I'm not gonna lie, I have some I have some gripes. My biggest gripe is the fact that all of the uh every time there was like every time you have a story arc, it's usually like four or five issues long. Towards the end of the story arc, it kind of felt like they had all of these different pieces and they were building up on to something. And it had a oversimplified solution or an abrupt ending. I just felt like the build-ups were better than the endings for all of the story arcs. You had the first one where he's in the town and he's he thinks he's going crazy. He turns out he turns out not to be crazy. The first issue is incredible. I will say that issue one for that run is awesome. Then he met Talia, and I love Talia. She does some really cool magic, and she's just I love her style, her look. She's a badass. Probably, I'd put her uh, as one of She's a, she's definitely become a favorite supporting character. I don't know how I feel about the romance between her and Blaze. I'll always prefer Roxanne, but she is pretty awesome. I am uh, I don't really care for anyone with Johnny Blaze except for Roxanne. Um, I'll get to it later, but I also am really pissed off that she's dead. So that was a choice that I never liked and I still don't appreciate. But I uh, I did enjoy their uh, their team ups and their banter and. How they work together, they were pretty cool. I just uh, I just don't like them sleeping together. But, I mean, I don't mind him sleeping with her, but I just, you know, it's the whole... I prefer her, prefer him with Roxanne. That's just how it is. Uh, I'm rambling, and I'm really sorry about that. No, uh, after that, there was another... There was the Blackheart story. And the Blackheart story had this really cool build-up. And, and then abruptly ends. All of these, and then they had the Dan Catch story arc. They had a great buildup. And I feel like all of the conclusions to each of the story arcs ended way too abruptly. And they were kind of anticlimactic. I did not appreciate that. I thought it was kind of uh, a kind of bummer. I just felt it was underwhelming. And, uh, each of the endings, the 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 content and, and the meat of the, each of the stories was exciting. 
fun. The artwork was really cool. I hate the fact that his bike is very similarly designed to Dan Ketch's because I always thought that was the one special unique thing about Dan Ketch was, besides the fact that I just think he's an awesome ghostwriter, was the fact that his motorcycle was very much his own. He had the cool battering ram on the front, and he was just very unique. Ghost Rider, um, Johnny Blaze's Ghost Rider would always ride just choppers, you know, different types of, like, uh, Harley Davidson or, you know, uh, motorcycle motorcycles where Dan Ketch kind of rode more, like, crotch rocket type stuff. And I kind of felt like his new, uh, Johnny Blaze's newest motorcycle very much kind of looks the same as Dan Ketch's. It's not the same, it's different, but it looks very, very similar. And it looks very different to the natural Johnny Blaze style of motorcycles. So that, that part was kind of annoying to me. But um, that's just me being nitpicky. Uh, as a whole, I think it was, if I were to rate it 1 out of 10, I would definitely get it like an 8, 8.5. It was still a good series. It was still had its moments. Um, so we're going to put... I'm going to put it nay. I'm going to put it nay. I still really did enjoy it. Um, I still think it was pretty awesome. Ooh. Now this next one. I feel really bad about my opinions on this one. I really, really do. The writer um, for the uh, this 2019 to 2020 series, the writer truly understood the characters. I will say that. That is, I, I can give, it's one of the highest compliments I can give for Ghost Rider writers because I tell you what, some of them are very hit and miss when they're talking about writing pre existing Ghost Rider characters. You know, the guy who was writing the Robbie Reyes series gets a pass because he was writing a brand new character. So he didn't really have to concern himself with pre existing lore and shit. But I think his name's Ed Bryson or Bry- Bison. Um, he was writing, um, I'm pretty sure it was that was his name, writing 2019 to 2020 series, and he was bringing back Dan Ketch, Ghost uh, Johnny Blaze was King of Hell, and he also even brought back Sister Sarah or uh, Caretaker Sarah, and I was so fucking excited for this run. They had that Marvel Comics Presents special story, and I read that. It was so good. It brought back um, I think her name was Wallow or something from the end of the 90s series like they were bringing back characters that people had completely forgotten about and he truly understood their personalities of these characters he brought back stacy stacy dolan i mean this guy knew his ghostwriter he knew his dan catch he knew these characters so fucking well the first two issues were fucking phenomenal i loved everything about it and then his absolute carnage crossover issue was fan fucking tastic and uh he brought back Alejandra. And there was one thing that I thought they were going to fuck up on is when they were talking about the solicitation of it, it was going to be Dan Ketch teaming up with Alejandra. And then at the beginning of the issue, Johnny Blaze is like, I need you to go help out Alejandra. And I was really worried Dan Ketch was going to be like, yeah, I'll go save her. You know, like he knew who she was. And I'm thinking in my head, Dan Ketch has never fucking met her. So what is he going to, you know... But then the writer explains that. It has Dan Ketch say, I don't even know who that is. I was so happy. Just because there are so many writers that forget small little details like that. Dan Ketch has never met this woman. You know? Johnny Blaze has. Johnny Blaze worked with her. But Dan Ketch hadn't. So I thought it was so cool. He knew, you know, all the light, the right lore with it and everything. And I was really excited. And that's why I'm, I'm going to rate this one right now. Um, and it also made... Uh, I was really disappointed is with this issue is he also wrote Alejandra really well and made me really, really, really like her character even more than I already did. And he did some interesting things with her character. And it was just, it was such an exciting story. And then at the end, they fucking kill her. I was really upset about that because I was like, fuck yeah, you've made this character super interesting to me. I want to see more done with her now. I want some maybe a new writer or him to come back and write her more because I really liked what they did with her character and then they kill her. I was pretty disappointed about that. Anyways, um, it gets even more disappointing. I think it's issue three or four. He ends up fighting Johnny Blaze. Johnny Blaze pulls the, the spirit of vengeance out of him 
and then um, basically tosses him aside. And Sarah, I think, saves him. And it's after that, everything starts slowly going downhill, is he gets possessed by this thing called the Spirit of Corruption. And he ends up looking so terrible. I hate this design so much. I was I was ridiculously pissed off. It just looks so fucking bad. I, I was very, very disappointed. But yeah, no, it's a terrible design. I was very upset. If anything, I mean... I have a feeling maybe Marvel editors were like, you know, maybe complaining that Dan Ketch and Johnny Blaze looked too similar and it was very hard to tell the two apart. Whereas Alejandra is a female ghostwriter, so it's a little easier to tell her apart from the rest. And uh, Robbie Reyes has a car. And they weren't going to change Johnny too much. Johnny kind of already stole Dan Ketch's design by having him wear the more um, the more punk rock leathers. I guess I would call it punk rock leathers. That might be a terrible description, but the leathers that Dan Ketch wore in the 90s, they kind of gave to Johnny Blaze's Ghost Rider. So it was kind of hard to differentiate Johnny Blaze and Dan Ketch a little bit. So I have a feeling maybe that's why they changed Dan Ketch up and made him the Spirit of Corruption. But if it were me personally to designing it differently, why not just give him a, a, a pure black skull and green fire? Because then he looks different than Johnny Blaze's. I don't know. I just, I didn't like, after that, really hate the the spirit of corruption thing i i just it lost all of my interest and it got me i kind of dis just super ridiculously disappointed in the series it started out really strong with the first two issues but then after that i could give a shit less i hate doing this but i'm gonna put it in c yeah the next run uh this is this is kind of sad but uh <laughs> I'm going to put this one in D. I, uh, it's, it's so funny. The first run with, uh, Robbie Reyes was awesome. As you'll see, I'm going to rate it a lot higher. It was extremely fun. I was really into the story. I loved Robbie. I loved his brother, um, who was in the wheelchair. Ah, I can't remember his name. But uh, I really, really enjoyed that run. It was exciting and fun. What's really mind-boggling and bizarre to me is is they cancel this run, then they do the Ghost Riders miniseries, and then they bring, um, they bring Robbie back and do this series. What blows my mind is it's written by the same guy, yet it's really bad. It, it's it's written by the same guy. How do you do that? How do you? write a really ridiculously awesome story and then write a really lame one next with the same, you know, same writer. I, I didn't understand that. Um, see, this one, they do this whole, they're trying to do the Circle of Four or the new Fantastic Four again. They have Robbie Reyes. They bring back X-23, as, uh, but this time she's posing as Wolverine. And um, they have this new Hulk. I think, uh, I don't know his name. He's this new talkative it's not bruce banner it's not thunderbolt ross uh, i think it's cho uh, i i don't remember his name but he was super lame didn't really care for him and i'm trying to think who oh and silk silk was the fourth one the spider-man uh placement i just it, it, what really sucked is it was a ghostwriter title the cover was ghostwriter everything about it looked ghostwritery and i was so excited and then you go to read it, and Ghost Riders, I don't even think in the beginning of it. I think it's all that Hulk guy. And I didn't know who that guy was, so I didn't really care about him. And it was the fact that I was reading a Ghost Rider title, and Ghost Rider's barely in it. And it was just boring. I remember being bored. And I'm sorry, when I'm reading a comic book, I don't want to be bored. I don't mind a comic book where there's no action, and there's just a bunch of dialogue. I'm rereading Cler Chris. Cler I'm rereading Chris Claremont's run on X Men, and I'm sorry. There's some issues that have no action at all, and just characters talking, and it's still exciting and interesting, and I'm still like really invested. I was not invested at all in this first issue, so I didn't even finish this run. I actually, it's I think it's the only Ghost Rider run I didn't finish, and that says a lot when I finished this fucking run. Uh <laughs> So I didn't finish it. I thought it sucked. 
I was super disappointed. It was a major bummer. I have all the issues. I just haven't read them. They're literally just collecting dust on a pile. No, they're not in a pile. They're in a short box in uh, the garage. But they sucked. I, I just, ugh, I couldn't finish it. I felt really disappointed. Anyways, on to the next one. Here we go. This one is Robbie Reyes' first run. Much better. Much, 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 much better. Uh, I might, like, do a little ranking of all of the stuff in B and, and A and stuff, like, put them in an order, you know? I might do that later. But uh, I think I'm going to put it in B. But if I were, I'm probably going to reorganize this and, like, make this, like, the highest B. Because I really fucking love this run. I don't know if I want to put it in A, though. You know, if I'm putting this in A, I should put this in A. That's fa that's only fair, right? If this is an A, this deserves to be an A. Um, it was so good. I the artwork also. I, I, I have to mention the artwork. The artwork was so beautiful. I love this artwork and I love the designs. Um, I actually think I got a poster of this. Um, but R Robbie was such a cool new ghostwriter. I really really liked him. I was surprised at how much I liked him because I. I'm one of those people who does not like when they change the main character in a series too many times. Because then every time you bring out a new series, everyone who's a fan of one of the characters, some a group, more than one group of fans going to be disappointed because the main character is not who they want it to be. It's like Green Lantern. Sorry, I'm going to go on tangent for two seconds. But in Green Lantern, there is four. there was four Earth Green Lanterns by the end of the 90s. You know, there was Hal Jordan, there was Jon Stewart, Guy Garner, and Kyle Rayner. So when you decide to do a new Green Lantern series, no matter what, you're pissing off a fan of those other three. Whoever decide, whoever becomes the Green Lantern, the other three who are, uh, are going to have fans that are going to be disappointed. So when you keep adding new main characters, and that's what Green Lantern's been doing. Now you have Jessica Cruz, you have Simon Baz, I think there's even uh, the Far Sector Girl. When you keep adding more characters you're just gonna piss off more fans by them not being the main character of the next series so stop making new main characters and ghost Rider's gotten to that point now there's you have well alejandra i don't think is ever going to be in charge of a series again which sucks i do like her character i think a mini series with her would be great like a four or five issue mini series i don't know have ed bryson write it because i really liked what he did with her in the symbiotes of vengeance uh short story it was great her character is amazing. Um, but it was just... Uh, anyways, we'll get back to her later. My point is, is every time now we have... We have we have jo we have Johnny Blaze, we have Dan Catch, we have uh, Robbie Reyes, we have Alejandra, and we also have Carter Slade. So anytime you do a new series, one of those uh, uh, is going to be picked and then the rest of the fans are going to be upset. Even if you make it about two of them, you're still upsetting a huge chunk of fans. And I think that's what sucks about making new main characters for series like this, is you're always going to upset someone. I still love it though. That was uh, it was it was I was very surprised at how much I liked it. It was awesome. They even made uh, Doctor Jekyll and Mister Hyde pretty exciting because he was the main villain in the first arc for this run, and I actually really enjoyed it. He was the designs for him was super cool, and his fight with uh, his fight with Mister Hyde and Doctor Jekyll it was awesome. Really, really great run. I uh, I fell in love with all the new characters. His little brother is adorable, and I, I just I cared about his the character's plight, and I wanted everything to work out for Robbie. It was it was fun. All right, now on to Alejandra. Now I'll talk more about her because I've been really wanting to. <laughs> My issues with uh, this run are the fact that uh, the guy who was writing it it was really interesting. Uh, Jason Aaron had just left and he had done such a good job with the series uh, I was kind of wondering what they were going to do next you know are they going to do a series about Dan are they going to do a series about Johnny because Dan had just come back after a 10 year hiatus in comics uh, Jason Aaron brought Dan Ketch back so I was like oh cool are we going to get to see more stuff with him are we going to get to see more stuff with Johnny and Johnny and Dan did appear in a couple uh, a couple random sh stories they appeared in, uh, I think, the death of... It was like the death of Wolverine, or Wolverine was possessed by the devil or something. 
Brother Voodoo was in it, and then you had Dan and uh, Johnny, and then there was the Deadpool team up, which was awful, awful, awful. It was very badly done. The artwork was terrible. The characters were very mishandled. I didn't even like Deadpool in it. There was a Johnny Blaze did end up appearing in another Deadpool comic, and that one I did like, but. The Ghost Riders were kind of in limbo. They were making small appearances here and there, but nothing more was really happening with it. And then out of nowhere, there was the whole fear itself story story arc that was going on through all Marvel. And then, um, uh, I think his name's Rob Williams who wrote it. Did he write? Let me see. I'm sorry, guys. I should have been maybe a little more prepared. I know my I know my Ghost Rider pretty well, but. Um, some stuff I kind of just forgot. I just haven't read all this stuff in a, in a while. Um, is that Rob Williams? Yeah, Rob Williams. Wow. I, sorry, I'm looking at it up on my phone. <laughs> yep, I, I feel pretty good about myself. I can't believe I remember that. Yeah, um, so he was writing this. Uh, he was writing... There was this whole Shadowland crossover stuff. And there was a one-shot that I think he wrote... Uh, about Ghost Rider, and it was pretty decent. It was okay. And then there was a... Uh, is it a bouncy castle? I don't remember. That's the only thing I remember from that. <laughs> and then after that, there was a... Uh, there was a, uh, a Spider-Man Ghost Rider st- story that was pretty cool. So I was kind of I was kind of like, uh, it, it could be a decent, you know, the next run. And I had a feeling it would be about Johnny Blaze, because that's what all the signs were kind of heading towards it being another Johnny Blaze series. And then after, uh, then you have, a, I think it was issue, like, minus one or something. Um, it was called Give Up the Ghost. And uh, Johnny Blaze does end up giving up the Ghost Rider to someone else. It's point one, zero point one, issue zero point one. That's weird. But, uh, and it was called Give Up the Ghost, and Johnny Blaze does. He ends up giving, the, he talks to this guy, Adam, and he gives up the Ghost Rider um, to someone else. And Alejandra ends up getting it. And my issues with it were I don't really like how Johnny Blaze sounded. Okay, so Johnny Blaze had been around by this time for around, what, 30, 40 years or so? And no one gave him this thick southern twang accent or whatever. He sounded so weird or out of character. And even if logically Johnny Blaze should have had that accent, he didn't for the last 30 years, so why change it? It just sounds weird to anyone who's been reading Ghost Rider for years and years. I just did not like how Johnny Blaze sounded in it. And even though he's not Ghost Rider in the series, he is a major supporting character throughout the entire run. So you have to see him talk all the time. And my biggest issue with this entire run, it's a huge slight for me, is what they did with Steel Wind and Steel Vengeance. See, Steelwind is a character I fell in love with. I really like her story. Her story is great in um, the original Johnny Blaze run, and she comes back in Dan Ketch's run, and she has an extremely interesting redemptive uh, redemption arc. You saw signs that she could be redeemed, even in her first appearance. She used to be a good person. She used to be an artist, and her life was destroyed. There were There was always this potential that something good could happen with her. And then throughout um, Spirits of Vengeance, you started to see her character um, find purpose again and become a good guy. Well, not a good person, but like a, a an anti-hero type thing. And I loved what they did with her character. And they fucking forgot all about this in this Rob Williams run. And they turned her into kind of an evil person again, and it was just lame. It was character assassination, and I didn't like it. Really upset me. So, yeah, screw this. Uh, there, there's so much I don't like about this run. There's so much I don't like about it. Unfortunately, Alejandra's the one thing to it. Well, also, Alejandra's character in this run, in this particular run, she doesn't have much of a character. She's kind of cardboard. She's kind of just there. Everything's happening around her. Stuff is going on. She's barely interesting in it. Her design's cool, and the story around her's okay, but she doesn't have much of a personality. So it's kind of also disappointing on her end. 
I I'm putting this in D. I really don't like this run. It's so frustrating because everything she appears in, like Circle of Four, and the, the issue I'm about to bring up, are examples where she could be an incredible character. Also here in the in the in this uh, uh, symbiote of vengeance, you know. But I'm gonna go back to this title right here, this X Men issue she made an appearance in, and I had to buy it just because I was curious because Ella Hunter doesn't appear much. She appears in I think nine issues here, and then she appears in the Circle of Four miniseries, and then here. And besides that maybe a small little background cameo or something, but she doesn't actually appear as a supporting character, except for in this one issue. And in this one issue, uh, this, th whoever wrote the, I can't remember who wrote this. Whoever wrote this should fucking write an Alejandra miniseries. But not just Alejandra, it should be Alejandra and Danny Moonstar. Because they are so fucking cool in this story. It's uh, X-Men Volume 3, 15.1. I don't know why they were doing all these points during that time but they were in 2011 and holy crap this story is really really cool and um yeah danny moonstar and alejandra have this really cool kind of just rapport and i don't know there should have been more of that i want more of it i wish there was like a four to five issue miniseries about those two traveling the country kicking ass together with sister sarah i mean caretaker sarah all three of them should have a team up it should be Danny Moonstar, Caretaker Sarah, and Alejandro Ghost Rider. All three of them, in a title together, I would read the shit out of that. It would be fucking awesome. Anyways, I love this issue. Um, I love the artwork in it. I love everything about it. Oh, uh, fuck it. You know what? I'm going to put it in A. This is my tier list. I can do whatever I want. <laughs> Um, yeah, I really, really like this issue. It's got X-Men, which I fucking love the X-Men. And it's got a cool uh, a, a cool version of Alejandra, which I actually like her in this issue. Okay, so... Um, ooh. Ooh, we're on Jason Aaron's run. Fuck yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, we're on Jason Aaron's run. So we're going to do Heavens on... You know, let's do an order. Let's do uh, let's do his run first, and then we'll do Heaven's on Fire. Okay, so here we go. Jason Aaron's run. Jason Aaron took over for... Nah, you know what? We're going to do this all in order. We'll do Daniel Way next. No, no, no. No, we'll, we'll, do, we'll do Jason Aaron's stuff. So Jason Aaron took over after Daniel Way. Daniel Way actually... Um, We'll get into it, but it, it was a, it was a decent, okay, not too memorable, but okay run. There actually is some memorable stuff in it, uh, but compared to everything before and mo well, most everything except for this, uh, before and everything like immediately after, um, it kind of feels mediocre in comparison. Uh, again, we'll get to it, uh, but yeah, then then you have. Um, um, Jason Aaron took over, and Jason Aaron's run. Holy crap. This run's a fucking good run. You got, uh, the return of Dan Ketch after ten years. Um, and you have Dan Ketch fight Johnny Blaze, which we've never seen before. And, uh, you have a great villain, Ezekiel, or Zedkiel. Um, you have an excellent villain. You have a lot of returning villains from the 90s, and, and even one from the 80s, uh, with the orb. And uh, there's all this incredible buildup. The caretaker shows up. And then we have one of my new favorite characters in Ghost Rider. I'd probably put her in my top 10 all-time favorite characters in Ghost Rider of all time. Um, Sarah. Uh, Sister Sarah or caretaker Sarah. I really, really like her. I think she's cool as hell. And I wish they would have done more with her. I honestly think that Johnny Blaze should have, after meeting Alejandra and all the problems that Alejandra was going through, I think it would have been great if you would have introduced her, um, introduced Alejandra to caretaker Sarah, and caretaker Sarah could have helped mentor her to understand her abilities and come to better understand what she should do with her abilities and her purpose. I think that would have been a great team up. That would have been a great story again. With, and then Danny Moonstar could have showed up and they all ran off together and traveled the country kicking ass and killing demons. Anyways, this run. Um, there are so many memorable moments. We got to meet a bunch of new ghostwriters. 
not just Dan Ketch and Johnny Blaze, but there were so many cool ghostwriters. And then we had one of my favorite speeches about religion and faith and belief of all time. Uh, I might post a little video, a little picture right here about that if I edit this video. Um, yeah, there's so much that I love about this run. It was it was really exciting. And then it, as a whole, it was great. The last three issues were illustrated by Tony Moore. And we have one of my favorite ish, single issues of Ghost Rider that I have signed by Jay Stern and Tony Moore. Um, the Dan Ketch issue where he fights a giant evil demonic semi. It's it's just, it's got one of my favorite transformations. It's got one of my favorite looks. I don't know if I want to throw this in S. I kind of want to throw this in S. Yeah, fuck it. I'm going to throw this in S. This will be my first S here. I love this run. Oh, and not even just the Dan Catch stuff. Even before the Dan Catch stuff, the the four issues. Ah, oh, shit. The four issues. The very first four issues. What is the name of that story arc? Oh, Hellbent Heaven Bound. Why, why did I forget that? Hellbent Heaven Bound. The, the four issues that start his run are so fucking balls to the wall. It's like Grindhouse on steroids. It's so good. So good. But then we come to the end of his run. Oh boy. I'm going to say it. It had such an incredible buildup. If we talk about his entire like Ghost Rider run to this miniseries, because it's a Heaven on, Heavens on Fire. It was a six-issue miniseries. I think it was six. Yeah, six issues. Oh, I wish it had at least one more issue. One more issue. Because he put so much build-up, and he added so many characters and supporting characters, and he had all these like subplots all built up, and then he, he pretty much ends all the subplots, the issue before the last issue, so that he could have the fight against Ezekiel in the final issue. And it just, it was so disappointing. That's unfortunately what I have to say about this run, is it was just disappointing. There was so much fucking cool. And I mean, I tell you what, he, he, he built up all this cool shit. There was the new Vengeance that was coming in. Um, there was Blackout. There was... Um, <laughs> the orb. <laughs> the orb. And then there was Sarah needing to get her revenge. Ah, oh, god damn, there was so much cool shit. And then he had to, like, all these subplots, he kind of had to just hurry up and rush their endings. It's kind of like what happened with uh, the newest Ghost Rider run, with this run. It's kind of like what happened here. They just, it was rushing, it was building up all this cool shit, taking the time. They just didn't have enough time to finish it and polish the ending. I, uh, like, the um, the ending with Ezekiel was kind of cool. I just wish they would have padded it out a little bit with more fighting. It would have been nice to see Ezekiel fight the Ghost Riders more, like Dan Ketch and Johnny Blaze, but we didn't get that. And it would have been nice to see vengeance fight Dan Ketch and Johnny Blaze but we didn't get that some of the stuff was ended off in one panel or even off panel it was so frustrating because we were all anyone who was reading it at the time was just excited and wanted to see how it would end and then they just abruptly end most of these story arcs I was very very disappointed and I really really hate that I, I don't like being that disappointed and shit so yeah, it, it, it sucks, and, and I'm sorry to say that. Uh, all the build-up was great. The first four issues, I mean, like, there was some great shit. Like, Madcap teaming up with fucking um, Scarecrow was such a cool concept. But, I don't know, man. There, there was just a lot about it I was super disappointed at. I don't want to put it in D, because I think it's better than both of these runs. I think I think this is actually a good place to put it because C in C, just because both of these are in C for the same reasons. Disappointment. Both of these super promising openings and disappointing results. So yeah, C C's perfect for both of those. Alright, then we're gonna go to Daniel Way's run. He wrote um twenty from two thousand six to two thousand nine, issues one through nineteen. I 
fucking, uh, I really didn't, I dig it. I dig his run. Uh, I think what I like most about it was it was cool to see Ghost Rider fight the Hulk, number one. That was awesome. I really liked the concept. Johnny Blaze escapes from hell with the devil kind of latching on. But the devil, once it gets to Earth, shatters into 666 pieces. And Johnny Blaze has to track down each piece and kill uh the like but he can't he can't possess people that are alive so what he does is those 660 666 pieces all go into dead recently dead bodies people that were recently deceased and so it was really interesting him tracking down all these recently deceased people fighting them and uh having to re-kill them and those pieces would i it would would like merge together and but the problem was is the more he killed the pieces that were remaining would become stronger. It's kind of like uh, Jet Li's The One, you know, where he, they were killing the other versions of themselves and the remaining versions that are still around become stronger. So that's what was happening. So by the time that Johnny Blaze had two, um, like one or two left, they would be like, un- like ridiculously OP, you know? So it was really interesting. Um, and it was really clever how uh, Johnny ends up finishing it. It's, it's it's it was pretty good. I really did enjoy it. Oh, also the Sleepy Hollow story arc. It was a it's an offshoot of the Civil War crossover. It's called Casualties of War, and it's where um, during Civil War the Punisher kills Jack O' Lantern, and Jack O' Lantern's body gets possessed by the devil and fights Johnny Blaze in Sleepy Hollow, and that's probably, in my opinion, the highlight of the entire run was that short, uh, miniseries. Well, that, uh, that, uh, I think it was four issues. Casualties of War is so good. I- I'm going to put it in B. I had a lot of fun with it. It's pretty good. I'll put it in B. All right. Next. Ooh, ooh. Road to Damnation. Clayton Crane and Garth Ennis, I think. Ennis? I don't know how to pronounce his name. But, uh, they did, uh, t- Road to Damnation. It's pretty freaking awesome. I really like this one. Uh, so basically, these angels tell Johnny Blaze that he needs to go to. Um, but he, Johnny Blaze is in hell at the time. He's uh, basically paying for selling his soul to the devil. He's serving his sentence, and these two angels need him to basically track down and bring this demon that's on Earth, back to hell. And they lie, and they tell Johnny Blaze that they can basically get him out of hell. So they use him. And he ends up fighting, um, going on Earth and tracking down, and I think there's also a renegade angel involved and stuff. It's six issues. It's a really good short story. Um, Road to Damnation. Check it out. It's it's pretty awesome. I think I'm going to put this in B. I really enjoyed it, but it's... uh, I don't know. It's not really tied to the main stuff that I really love about Ghost Rider. It's just a fun short story. <sighs> now we get to the uh, worst story in all of Ghost Rider, in my opinion. I feel really bad for calling it the worst. It, it, what's what's wrong with it is the fact that it's written by someone who clearly didn't do any research and doesn't really understand or know anything about Ghost Rider. It seems like they have the the basic cliff notes down, and that's it. The artwork's kind of cool, um, but I just I don't like this run. I think what really pisses me off more than anything else is it takes place right after Volume Two, um, well, right after the '90s series, and in the '90s series, Dan Ketch was Ghost Rider, right? Well, even he's not Ghost Rider at the end of the series, uh. Noble Kale, the demon that was possessed him, they finally split. Dan Ketch is rid of the Ghost Rider. Noble Kale has the has the de- is, is becomes the king of hell. But then comes back to Earth in Howard Mackey's uh Peter Parker Spider Man series and does end up merging back with Dan Ketch at the end. So yes, he does he's still with the demon, but Johnny Blaze at this time is not possessed by a demon at all. He is free of the Ghost Rider. And in this series, no mention of Dan Ketch and Johnny Blaze's Ghost Rider again. And they never, ever, I don't think even to this day, 
ever explained how he became Ghost Rider again. Never explained. To this day, he's just randomly an office worker who's also Ghost Rider in this series. It's very much what the fuck. And it's just not a very good series. I didn't like it at all. I didn't enjoy it. So, uh, I'm going to put you at the very, very, very bottom of D. Fuck you. Okay, the 90s series. Okay, so we'll, we're just going to do it all backwards, but we're going to do it backwards where including these. So uh, I'll probably do the end of it, which is 70 through 94. And I know some people basically have issues with, I have problems with post Mackie 90s Ghost Rider. But I will tell you what, uh, the first issue and everything starts out really strong. I actually really like the beginning of this run. I think it gets a little crazy and convoluted towards the end. I mean, it doesn't get crazy and convoluted. I think the problem that people have with it is people had all these expectations. And when we finally got to see the origin of Zer of, uh, of Dan Ketch's Ghost Rider, uh, I feel like there was a lot of disappointment. People wanted to, it to be something it wasn't. And so I think a lot of people were disappointed how, how it ended up, what it ended up being. And, I mean, you can't fault the writer for that. The writer was doing what they... You know, they had the, they had an idea in their head of what it should be, and it just wasn't what everyone wanted it to be. So I'm going to put... I still really enjoyed it. And I I like the fact that it took chances, and it did some really interesting things that I don't think will ever be done ever again in Ghost Rider. And even though some of the art, like Pop... I think his name was Pop Mon or whatever, even his artwork, even though it was crazy and insane and different... I don't know if we'll ever see Ghost Rider look like that again. So I kind of like, I kind of dig it. I mean, it's very different, but it was interesting. And uh, I don't hate it. Um, plus, it was still Dan Catch. And I fucking love Dan Catch. <laughs> I'm a fanboy. I admit it. When it comes to him, he's, he's like, I'm a huge fanboy. I don't know if I want to put it in. I don't think I could put it in A. But I can put it in B. And I can be okay with that. I'm going to put it in B. Uh... So I'm thinking here, I really, really like this. I, I, I like Betrayals and Enchains. They're the two main, main things that happen during 51 through 69. They're not the only things to happen, but they're, when I think of this era of Ghost Rider, that's the first thing that pops in my head, and that's why I used this picture, is I think of Betrayals and Enchains. And it was a really, uh, it's probably one of my favorite story arcs in the second half of Ghost Rider. I'm going to probably at least put it in A. I'm probably going to put this in A. Um, it's not the only thing that happens. We also get the return of uh, Gambit and Wolverine teaming up with uh, Ghost Rider to fight more Brood, which is really cool. Um, we get some great, great Blackout stories. Um, the last Blackout stories until... Um, I think, yeah, Blackout's last appearance is during this part until uh, Jace Darren brings him back. And it's a really good, uh, really good story. <laughs> I don't know, I'm just picturing it. It was really cool. I think that, uh, yeah, I'm going to put that here. And then we'll do Blaze. Blaze Blaze is fucking underrated as all hell. This series kicks ass. It, it was so good. A traveling carnival, weird monsters, Johnny Blaze just being a badass on a motorcycle with a Hellfire shotgun. Uh, all the, the subplots and all the uh, side characters are so cool. We get the last stuff with Clara. Uh, Cl I think her name's Clara. The girl that uh, doesn't have eyeballs that can see the future and shit. She's really cool. She had some cool subplots in here. I don't think Wolf appeared in here. No, I think he did. Um, there are certain characters that I wish would have... I thought this would have been a prime time to bring back characters like Red and Cynthia, but they never came back. I don't know. There's, there's so many characters that I love. I wish they could have done so much more. It was only 12 issues long. It was way shorter than it should have been. It was so fucking good. I honestly think this is a hidden gem of the 90s and such a good fucking series. I, I think I recommend anyone read this series. It's so good. Um, I'm going to put it here. I'm going to put it in A. I loved it. It was so good. All right. Now, Spirit of Vengeance. Spirit of Vengeance is the best stuff to happen during the, the Midnight Sun stuff. Spirit of Vengeance, the best stuff that happened during all of Midnight Suns. So fucking good. And uh, not only did we have the, uh, the the Spirits of Venom four-issue crossover with Spider-Man, it was pretty cool. We also had the first appearance of Vengeance in that carnival, I think it was the Carnival of Death. 
so awesome. Vengeance was just badass. I loved Vengeance when he was a bad guy. He was so much cooler as a bad guy than he ever was as an anti-hero or a good guy. He was this unrelenting, unstoppable force of chaos. He was really cool. It was also cool seeing Steel Vengeance and Steel Wind again and seeing all of Steel Wind's redemption, like her arc where she was trying to become a better person. The end of Centris, though I will say Centris's design is terrible in the 90s. He looks so much cooler as this evil count. Um, but just as a whole, this series kicks fucking ass and also deserves to be an A. Um, you know what? There's barely anything in S. No, no, okay. Yeah, no, no. I'm going to keep it keep it in A. I might I think I'm going to like organize A and B after I'm done. Now, this one I think I'm going to get a lot of shit for. Um, the Midnight Suns era of Ghost Rider. <sighs> okay, so issue 25 is excellent. It is very much what the fuck. Um, and then I'm going to include all the Midnight Suns crossovers in this right here. Uh... So, if we, we go to the first one, Rise of the Midnight Suns. Rise of the Midnight Suns was fun. It was really interesting. I liked uh, Night Stalker's first issue. It was really cool. I like Blade. Blade's a really cool character. Um, I don't know much about Frank Drake and Hannibal King. I just know what I read in those Night Stalker's issues. And they're decent characters. They're pretty cool. Um, Darkhold was good, but I don't know a lot about Darkhold. <laughs> I know what I've read in the Midnight Suns crossovers, and that's it. So I feel like there's more to it than that. Like Victoria Montressi, I think is her name. Like she was an interesting character, how she could kind of sense where the dark old pages were. And she was she was cool. I just, uh, and the dwarf, the dwarf was creepy as fuck, but also really cool. I, I, I liked what I read. I just, I just didn't understand a lot of it. I've never really gotten to a cult comics, like whoa, really digging deep into supernatural shit. Like, Ghost Rider is a supernatural character, but he's a supernatural character who just fights basic demons. They don't really go into, like, the spirituality and, like, the, the spells and the uh, the lore of these demons. It's mostly just uh, street crime shit. I don't know. Um, but I, maybe one day I'll, I'll delve a little bit more into that stuff. It's really cool, though. And then you have, um, after that first crossover, then Dan Ketch comes back... Um, and that issue was fun. And then we got the Madcap issue. I love the Madcap issue. I was so blown away by the fact that that issue was so crazy, batshit awesome. And then he never appears again in Ghost Rider until Jason Aaron brings him back. Like, what the fuck? Um, that was such a, he was such a cool villain for Ghost Rider. And then, uh, after that, what else happened? Um, well, Midnight Massacre. Midnight Massacre was pretty cool. Um, I, I the first time I read it, though, I will say this, I, I got what was going on, but at the same time, I, it was the only time I was ever reading any of those uh, other series. So there would be characters that would appear, like in um, Darkhold and in Darkhold and Night Stalkers that I had never seen before, and I had no idea who they were. Like the guy with the glass. I don't know if you know what, if you know what I'm talking about. You know what I'm talking about. If you don't, you don't. That appeared in uh, the Darkhold book. I, I didn't know who that guy was. And also the artwork in Darkhold is really weird. Not bad, just different <laughs> but uh then, then after midnight massacre we have the siege of darkness siege of darkness it started out super strong in the first half and i did enjoy it in the first half but the second half it just got really i think it 16 issues is way too long for a huge crossover like that way too long i think it could have been done in eight and done better with tighter pacing if they would have just made it an eight issue crossover i would have probably liked it more i think they uh they drag certain things on too long and some things were just anticlimactic. The fight between Ghost Rider and Zarathos was so disappointing. It could have been a lot better. Um, I didn't like the Siege of Darkness as much as I wanted to. I honestly collecting it because I went to multiple comic book shops and I was just searching specifically for every issue of the Siege of Darkness. Collecting it was a lot more fun than reading it. <laughs> I hate saying that, but it's kind of true. And the weird stuff that was going on with Doctor Strange, I don't know. It was good. It just wasn't. What I ah I feel like it, if it would have been trimmed down to eight hell even ten issues, I think it would have been better. Anyways, I still liked it, but that's that's about all I can say about that. Um, let's put I'm gonna put it B. Please don't hate me. Uh, yeah, it's B. <laughs> okay, so the last two, 
yeah, they, they're they're very easily. I put a, I made them last for a reason. Okay, they're both S's. <laughs> the the first twenty four issues of Dan Ketch's run on Ghost Rider, it's it's almost perfect. The only thing that drags it down a bit is the stuff with the Zodiac. That stuff I didn't care for as much, but everything before and after that is pretty awesome. Issue seven is 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 his highlight for me. It's a fucking depressing and beautiful issue. Issue 14 is another highlight for me. Johnny Blaze meeting Dan Ketch for the first time is so fucking cool. Even the 16 issues, 16 and 17 with Spider-Man are really fun. And uh, the whole rivalry between Ghost Rider and Hobgoblin, which people don't bring out, uh, like that disappeared after the 90s series. But it was so cool during the 90s. Like, and it was mostly, I think it was more Demon Goblin than Hobgoblin. But Demon Goblin and Ghost Rider are just... Ah, such a cool, like, kind of rivalry-ish thing. I don't know. It was really awesome, though. And then you have, uh, um, then you have all the stuff with Death Watch. Death Watch is so fucking awesome. And Hag and Troll, they're great characters. I, I loved all of that stuff. Uh, and, and Snowblind. Snowblind was another great character and with some great stories. Issue 1 through 24, man. It's, it's, it's the best. It's like a fucking, fucking, it's like a fucking season of a t- television series. It's, and a really good one at that. Okay, and the only reason... I don't have everything of Johnny Blaze's run because I haven't read everything of Johnny Blaze's run. I've read issue 50, and I've read, like, a few random issues, and this is what I've read. I've read the la- very last stories, the last 14 issues. But I will tell you this right here, right now, the last 14 issues of Johnny Blaze's run are perfection. I think there's only, like, maybe one issue out of those 14 that I, like, think was okay. Maybe one or two. But as a whole, it is uh, incredible. So now if I were to put these in order i would do this please don't hate me (laughs) there we go i that it's okay i I was born in the 90s uh 90s ghost story was my introduction i think to comic books as a whole so i'm a little biased there but even if i wasn't biased i still think I've introduced some people to Ghost Rider, and they do. They love this one. This, this runs amazing. I, I have a friend from high school, Axel. I had him read this, and he, he consumed my entire 90s run. He loved it so much. So I, I do. I think it's just an incredible run. This run is also almost perfect. Uh, the, the standout issues being the Terrible Curse of Jenny Blaze, the uh, Origin of Zarathos, and anything with Centris and the Steel One stuff. I think they're it's just ridiculously good and i think jason aaron was the first one to really bring back the continuity from these two runs and do something with it it was kind of ignored before that the hammer lane road to damnation and even daniel Wise run kind of ignore the continuity from these two runs they mention a few a few small things here and there but this is the run that really ran with everything that was created from these two runs and kind of took it moved it forward so that's why I definitely have these three up here. These are the most fun runs and the stuff I love the most. Now, the stuff in A, is none of it's bad. This is all great shit right here. This is just great shit that if I were to pick up comics, these are the ones I would pick up first, you know? The ones that I love the most. But these are still incredible stories that I love dearly. Um, I would definitely change this stuff around, though. I'd probably put... I'd probably put this at the end of A, and I'd put, I'll put Spirits of Vengeance at the beginning. I think it's, wait, I think it's my favorite thing from A. And then I would put, um, the, the, put this number two, honestly, I'd probably put this at the end. Um, put Blaze next. Again, I'm really biased, the 90s stuff really did it for me. It's my favorite Ghost Rider stuff. Again, everyone's going to have a different list. Everybody's going to have different opinions. And I don't think there's... When it comes to Ghost Rider, there's not really any wrong opinions. I don't care what you like the most, as long as you like Ghost Rider. <laughs> uh, actually, yeah, I like, I'll like. i keep that there. Um, Yeah, that there. Oh, that one has Dan Catch in it. But that one has the X-Men in it. Yeah, let's keep that like that. And then I'm going to put... Transform... This one next, and this one last, just because there is a little bit of disappointment in this run. Mostly just because certain story arcs end way too abruptly and quickly without any, um, I don't know. There's more build-up than there is conclusion, and I don't like that. Alright, so now, 
B. If I want to go to B. All right. Don't worry, Circle of Four is not my favorite thing in B. <laughs> I love Circle of Four, but that's probably also at the bottom. Uh, out of all of this? See, this is actually probably going to be the hardest one. Is between all of these. I'm going to put this up here. And I'm going to put... Wow, that's okay. This is this is a little harder for me. I think we finally did it. We finally got to the part where it's very hard for me to choose what comes next. Let's go with. Hmm. I think at this point we should start thinking about consistency. What's consistently good, and what's consistently bad. Not including this one. I'm putting the. I'm keeping that one up there just because there's the highs. There are the high highs are way better than the low lows in this one. I genuinely love the high highs and during this time. See, I went back and I read this run about five years ago, and I remember just loving it a lot more than I expected to. And that's why I think I want to keep it where it's at, is because of that. I did not realize how much I was going to enjoy it. I assumed it was all shitty, because that's what I kept hearing and that's what I kept remembering. But honestly, the end of the 90s run isn't as bad as everybody says it is. There are some terribly low lows. But the highs are really good. So that's why I want to keep it up there. You know what? Let's put... Let's put fucking... Yeah, there we go. Okay, so let's put... Let's put Road to Damnation. Because it is a, just a solid story. We're going to put Thunderbolts towards the end. I do like Thunderbolts, but it's not really Ghost Rider centric. And it's just not... Yeah, I guess that's about it. It's not really Ghost Rider centric. It's still got some great Johnny Blaze moments in it. Um... This is ironically pretty Johnny Blaze centric. I don't care for the reason I don't even talk about it is I don't really care for uh, Ghost Rider in space. What is his name? Um, wow, I don't even Cosmic Ghost Rider. I do not really care for him, and I know he also has a spot in this. But uh, but it is cool that this is like pretty much purely centric Ghost Rider story. Of uh, let's put Daniel Daniel Ways running next. Some people might find that blasphemy, but I put Daniel Way's run above <laughs> above the Midnight Sun stuff. But I, I did enjoy it a lot. Ghost Racers. I'm gonna put I'll put Ghost Racers down here. I'm gonna put Okay, I'll put I'll put it here. I'm gonna put it right here. And then I'll put Challenge of the Ghost Riders next. And then I'll put Ghost Racers. Then I'm gonna put circle of four. Again, this is just my tier list. Your guys' are gonna be very different than mine. But uh yeah, I think that's that's my tier list. Please don't hate me. Alright, that is it. Yeah, so that's my tier list. I hope you guys uh enjoyed this. I hope you guys have your own, you know, tier lists that exist and uh well, maybe make one yourselves and you guys can I don't know if you guys can post in my community comments or not but uh, I think that would be kind of cool I'd like to see if you guys have your own tier lists you know just maybe give me your opinions and thoughts on it and, I don't know if you're not uh if you're not already maybe like and subscribe I'd appreciate that hope you guys enjoyed and had a good time you guys uh take it easy and enjoy the weekend have a good one